Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ is Lord. Glory be to the Lord Jesus Christ who lives forever and ever. This is Bishop James Sansensaki of the Christ Church International. And it's a blessing once again to come your way with God's word of faith and hope for your day today. I want to speak to you from Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. It says, this is what the Lord God declares. He says, I have got plans of good. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Jeremiah 29, 11. It says, this is what the Lord God Almighty says. That I have plans of good and not of evil. Plans of future. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Today, I just want to encourage you that there is hope for the future. In this climate that we find ourselves, this global pandemic of COVID-19, infections, death, governments not sure what is going to happen, businesses folding up by the day, threats to the livelihood of millions of people, threats to the jobs of millions of people, threats to the lives of many millions. There is that state of uncertainty already Without all these things, naturally, we always have a fear of tomorrow because we are uncertain of tomorrow. We are not sure what is going to happen tomorrow. It's a normal thing that happens to humans. But in the current crisis, it has become more pronounced. You know, it is said that the future is an opportunity yet unmet, a path yet untraveled, and a life yet unlived. Let me say that again. It is said that the future is an opportunity yet unmet, a path yet untraveled, and a life yet unlived. And how our future will be lived depends on the priorities and purposes of our lives today. You see, so the direction we take right now determines where we will end up in the future. This is a very, very important point to understand. In the midst of crisis, in the midst of despondency, in the midst of hopelessness, I just want you to know the direction we will still take right now in the situation determines where we'll end up in the future. See, we might be frightened by an uncertain future, but as Christians, we don't have to be afraid. We can welcome this crisis, this situation, this new normal with an anticipation of what God will do in us and through us in the midst of the situation. Our future as Christians is as bright as the promises of God. The Bible says the promises of God are yes and amen in him. And that is where I want to place you this morning. Trusting God, even in the current situation, where the decision you take, the decision to trust God, is what is going to determine the future. See, when the children of Israel were being held as captives in Babylon, God sent them a message of hope. And many of them felt that God had forgotten about them at that point, that his intention towards them were very bad. They found themselves in captivity. They are... You know, captors were ruling over them and more treating them, even though they are the children of God. They were frightened about their future and they cried out to God for deliverance. So the Bible says God raised up the prophet Jeremiah to speak to them. And he brought them that word of hope that God says there is a future for you. If you have ever felt as though you were forgotten by God, if you have ever felt that God was against you, or if you have ever felt and have been frightened about your future, then God's words to the Israelites apply to you as well. He says, for I know the plans I have for you. He had plans for you when you were a clot of blood. He had plans for you when you were in the nine months in the womb. He still had plans for you when you didn't even know about them and allowed you to be born. He has allowed you to see things up to today and you still think he's forgotten about you. He said, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. I came as a servant of God to announce to you there is hope for your future. In the midst of the darkness and the gloom, there is hope. He says, then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I want you to enter this new norm, this new season, this new problem, whatever it is, we will call it, with hope and positive expectations because God will do great things with your life and for your life in the midst of the current crisis, in the midst of the current climate, God will still show himself to be God. He has never 
outlived his usefulness of being God in our lives. And so I pray for you in Jesus' name that as you enter this season, may you enter with hope and expectations because he has prepared in advance great and mighty things for you to accomplish and he will do it in your life. Don't give up. You are not dying now. This crisis will be over. This crisis will not destroy you. This current climate, once you have God, our God is already in tomorrow. God is already in the future. He said, I have plans of good and not of evil to give you a future and a hope, something to hope for. This morning, cheer up. It may look gloomy, it may look darker, but there is light that is coming from God and that light will shine in your path in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So whatever news you have heard that have put so much hopelessness in you, I came as a servant of God to announce to you there is hope for tomorrow. There is hope for you. For your sake, that job will be maintained. For your sake, your testimony will be like that of Jacob and like that of Joseph. Both of them, their masters once testified that since you came here to work here, all things have been well for us. When management meet to decide to lay people off, may you be exempted by the grace of God and by the mercies of God. May the Lord God Almighty shield you in this season. But above all, my prayer for you today that you understand the purpose of God for your life and that you receive an assurance in your heart that there's hope for your tomorrow. You are contemplating suicide, somebody that is listening to me, don't contemplate it. Contemplate hope for tomorrow. You will see things will turn around for the better. There is hope for you. Cheer up. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, all is not lost. Even when things appear lost today, in God, nothing is lost. In the midst of the hopelessness, God will create a hopeful situation. He's able to bring water out of a rock. Believe him and trust him. If he could watch you for nine months in the womb, when you don't have no plans, you don't know what life is about, you have no idea about economics and COVID and all of that, and you are still comfortable, you were born and he provided for you until you could reason and until you can become aware of yourself and your surroundings and you now have knowledge and know things about fear and fright and worry, I want you to know he still has plans for you. So long as you are alive, God's economy will take care of you. God will show himself to be God. You may be bundled with so many and saddled with so many challenges from school fees to the fear of what will happen to the children, to the fear of your life, to the fear of what is going to happen tomorrow. Can we sustain it? Would, you be able, would we be able to live? Would we be able to maintain? this look at the embarrassment coming look at the shame coming listen reject all of them because i've come to realize that both fear and faith requires you to believe in something you don't see anyway so i want you to choose faith rather than fear in the mighty name of the lord jesus christ and may god honor your faith and may god honor your trust in him he will make a way where there seems to be no way cheer up your hope is in god Life is not lost. God will come through for you in Jesus' name. And I pray for you, Lord God Almighty. I pray for my hearers this morning. I ask specifically, reveal to them your plans for them. Assure this person who is listening to me that it shall be well and that there's hope for tomorrow. Whatever he has lost, whatever she has lost today, Father, I pray, compensate them. Assure them. Open a door in the midst of the current situation. Honor your word in Isaiah 40. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, plant rivers. Put rivers in their deserts. In Jesus' name, plant trees in their deserts. Do the impossible for them. Show them that you are God and King and assure them of your hand and your presence. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command every fear to depart from them. And I pray that the word of God they have heard will inspire faith and hope in them. And based on it, I pray that you look upon them with an eye of mercy and respond to them in the name of Jesus Christ, of Nazareth, the son of the living God. May God put a testimony on your lips. And until I come your way again tomorrow, a Bishop James Sinsaki of the Christ Church International in London, United Kingdom. Have a blessed, fruitful, productive, and fruitful day. Bye-bye.